Hey everyone, Ryan Parrish back with another sports roundup. We only had a handful of games this week with many sports starting to enter the final weeks of the regular season, but let's get you caught up on what's been going on this week. On Monday, the Tetons basketball squads traveled to Bismarck to take on the United Tribes Technical College. The women's team came up short yet again, losing 50-62. The men's team was able to pull off a 103-86 win. Point guard Joe O'Reilly once again led the team with 23 points. Forwards Bart Schild and Michael Paolo each added 22. On Tuesday, the Coyotes girls hockey team traveled to Watford City, coming away with a 4-3 victory. On Thursday, the Coyotes basketball teams made their way to Watford City. It was a fruitful trip for each squad. The boys narrowly escaping with a 64-60 win, and the girls comfortably winning 62-47. The Tetons basketball teams were also in action Thursday, with road game at Dawson. O'Shane Taylor Douglas led Wilson State men with 16, but the team couldn't squeak out a victory, losing 79-75. Meanwhile, the women were led by Shaylee Sheridan's 22, but they too fell 79-61. to For our interview this week, I caught up with Coyote Swim and Dive coach Joe Kemp. With the swim season a month out from the state tournament, I asked Coach Kemp for his update on what the team's been up to. So, for those who haven't been following, catch us up. What is, what's been going on with the swim team? Well, um, over Christmas break, we went about a month without any competition, and then really jumped into things after that. We had a meet in Jamestown, um, another one in Minot, and then Fargo, so lots of travel there uh, in that first three week stretch. On top of that, the guys started two day practices, uh, first of January, second of January, and we're in our fifth week of two days now, so um, with the travel and all the two day practices combined, plus ramping up the yardage, and just, um, you know, they started a new semester of school and everything, they're getting a little bit worn out. Um, that being said, times are dropping. We were in Fargo last week at their new pool. Um, the old Olympic trials pool was torn down and moved to Fargo and they rebuilt it there. Beautiful facility, that's where state's gonna be held. Uh, every team in the state was there last weekend and our guys did really, really well. Our top point, point scorers, uh, besides Matt Jorgensen, who was out with the spring meet, um, our five top point scorers, they all swam personal bests in each of their events. Um, so it was a big day for us. Kind of a nice confidence booster for the guys. And then we got right back to the training this week. Um, everyone's pretty worn out, getting a little bit weird, but it's the way it is. That's kind of this point in the seasons when the team, I mean, that's, this is when their, their um, cohesiveness really starts to, like if you're a nice cohesive group, this part of the season is really productive. If you're not a cohesive group, holy crap, things can fall apart fast. And this is a cohesive group. We've got great leadership. And so this, this has been a really, really productive last few weeks. And we got two more weeks of building for WDA. So. Talk about, I guess, that process of trying to get in shape for state and uh, what these, this last month is really going to look like for you guys. So. Uh, from what I understand, a lot of teams like to build up their yardage. They have uh, swimmers who swim year-round, um, so they come into the season with a nice solid base uh, of conditioning. So they, they peak their yardage kind of mid-season or so. Uh, we have a lot of guys, we have mostly multi-sport athletes. In fact, no one on our team swims year-round. Um, uh, some of our top point scorers here are our top two players on the tennis team. So um, they come into the season not in good swimming shape. So we spend most of our season building yardage um, and then they have to build yardage all the way up until like the last possible second. So uh, they'll hit 10,000 yards, not next week, but the week after they'll be hitting 10,000 yards a few days that week. Um, and so, I mean, they're just getting run into the ground. I can't imagine how crappy they feel right now. I, f I feel like crap. And, like, I, I only have to wake up and show up. I don't have to do anything else. <laughs> and, and they do this, they go to school, then they come back and do this again, and they're doing it at a high level, um, high intensity, lots of yardage. Um, so they're gonna be pretty worn out in a couple weeks here. And then um, first week of taper, the one leading into WDA, it's kind of the, the rest and recovery, your immune system takes over, so you still kind of just feel like crap it's frustrating because you're doing less yardage, it's higher intensity, and you just feel like crap. You're swimming like crap. You're thinking that it's supposed to be awesome and it's not. Um, and we do a drop taper so that 
that last week, hopefully things, first day of the week, um, leading into state, still going to feel like crap. And then they'll just get progressively better. By the time Wednesday, Thursday, Friday rolls around, they're going to be like so much energy they can barely contain themselves, ideally. Has anybody been stepping up? I know you guys usually have a core of people that have been performing well for you guys all season. Has anybody kind of started yeah. to show up a little more lately? Uh, yeah, so uh, our diving core is uh, Diana Ferenkopf, who was my coach growing up. She's, she does an awesome job. She taught herself how to coach swimming, then she taught herself how to coach diving. Um, she does an awesome job with these guys. Uh, Matt Jorgensen, obviously the best male diver we've ever had in Lewiston. Um, leading the group. And then Christian Fow, who swims at a high level and dives at a high level, he's starting to come around. Um, he, he can throw some really pretty dives. His level of difficulty isn't quite where Matt Jorgensen's is at, but I mean, it's not for lack of effort. Christian's out there, he, he flops more than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> and he just right back on the board, right back on the board. Um, and with with the way he can throw, make dives look pretty, I guess. Um, his scores are starting to skyrocket. And Josh Reeb, he's doing a really good job too. Another guy who flops a lot, has high degree of difficulty, probably is swinging above his weight class a little bit, but he scores a lot of points because of it. He just has to endure a lot of pain in the process. But he's doing a good job too. Um, so they're all qualified for state, they're all set. And then like you said, we've got our core group of swimmers. Um, they've been my core group ever since I started coaching here four years ago. Um, and, and beyond that, we got a new guy, Eli Willardson. He's obsessed with swimming. He's been awesome for this team. He pushes me to coach harder. He pushes all the guys to swim harder. He's, I, I haven't had an athlete like him yet. And it's kind of, it's, it's crazy. His mindset is just go, 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 go. And he's obsessed, it's, it's almost weird. Um, uh, Tyler Jorgensen is another kid, uh, Matt Jorgensen's little brother, he's an 8th grader this year, and he just, like, every time he swims a race, everyone kind of stops to watch him because they're like, what the hell is Tyler going to do now? Um, he's starting to swim some really fast times. He's qualified for state in a couple events. Everything he does is just pretty impressive, um, and, I mean, he's just a really quiet kid, you never know by talking to him that he's such a good athlete, but he's doing an awesome job. Um, Chase Glucker, he's a junior this year. Uh, a couple years ago, I wouldn't have described him as an athlete. Now he's probably gonna qualify for state this year. Uh, he's battling illness right now, but he works really, really hard. Uh, he's a 500 freestyler, miserable event to be good at, but he, he loves it, he does well with it. Um, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of good young swimmers here. And finally, here's what you have to look forward to this weekend. Starting with that Coyote Swim and Dive team, they travel to Bismarck this weekend for a two-day meet. Also starting tonight, the Tetons hockey team welcomes Jamestown to the Pete Conlon rink at Raymond Center for the first of two games. The Tetons will look to avenge a two-game sweep Jamestown handed them earlier this season. The puck drops tonight at 7, with Saturday's game starting at 1 p.m. The Coyotes girls hockey team will also be in action tonight against the Bismarck Blizzard at the Agri Sports Complex. That game will also start at 7. On Saturday, the wrestling team will have its final match of the regular season as they square off against Century in Bismarck. And finally, on Saturday, both of the high school hockey teams will have action against Mandan. The boys start the day's games off at 4.30, followed by the girls at 7. That's it for this week in sports. I'll see you all next week.